for more on this, let's welcome back in attorney and Republican strategist Aaron Elmore and radio host for Project and Project 21 National Advisory Board member Christopher Arps. Uh, great to have you both on. Um, Aaron, you're an attorney. Uh, this is, you know, these hearings, it's not a court of law, but cross-examination is a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing that we've got in a democracy. Both of these Secret Service agents, Tony Ornato and Bobby Engel, uh, well-respected, stellar records, both of them, they have both offered to come and testify to refute that testimony from Cassidy Hutchinson. Do you expect to hear from them at any point during these hearings? Short answer, no. The way that this fake sham kangaroo court show trial is going is absolutely despicable to the American people that think this has any sort of real legal or, or ramifications of any sort. This is not a court of law. There is no judge. There is no jury other than partisan actors. There are no rules of evidence. There is no cross-examination. There are no impeachment witnesses, evidence or impeachment testimony in a real legal sense. So the Democrats here or the partisan actors here, if you include, you know, Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger, are really just trying to get to a goal. And what it seems that goal is right now is to prevent former President Trump from being able to run again. Be careful what you wish for Democrats, mm. because we know we have great candidates in the hopper as well. But what's really scary is that people that are watching this at home that don't understand the legal system don't understand that this trial has no real legal bearing or ramifications, and it's completely one-sided. Right. Yeah, Chris, it's almost like a made-for-TV event. And to Aaron's point, if people are watching, you know, CNN or other media outlets or just seeing things on social media, they're like, well, there's two Republicans on this committee, so <laughs> it's fair. But look at the two Republicans who are on that. And then to Rob's point, if these two Secret Service agents actually are called to testify, there's been reports that they won't do it in that public setting on TV for everyone to watch. It right. would be private. You know, Democrats want to have it both ways. They want to say that this is just a congressional hearing. We're trying to get to the bottom of what happened on January 6th, that this is not a legal proceeding. But they want to use the so-called evidence that they have gathered um, from these hearings to refer these, uh, the, these this evidence, quote-unquote, to the Justice Department to possibly prosecute the president of the United States. I mean, I'm not an attorney, but I've watched enough Madlock episodes <laughs> to know that um, what this uh, young staffer, it was complete hearsay, no one to refute any of that evidence. I've never ridden in the beast, but uh, it's hard for me to imagine that the president of the United States in the back of a limousine has stretch Armstrong arms and can reach up and try to grab the wheel uh, of the uh, limousine. That seems a little far stretched uh, for me. Go, go, gadget arms. I was just saying, <laughs> Inspector Gadget. <laughs> and, you know, the president, when I, when I interviewed uh, Donald Trump, he, he sort of laughed too, um, which, you know, w which surprised me. I mean, but it just, it told me that it's just like the story was just ridiculous. And when he's laughing, which is unlike him. Um, he's definitely got mm -hmm. a sense of humor, of course. Uh, but I, I was like, oh, okay, that's because it's just the story is is ridiculous. And the fact that these two Secret Service agents that were there in the car, Cassidy Hutchinson wasn't in the car. Um, they want to testify, uh, and the Secret Service one hour after that testimony wrapped up Tuesday, they came out and said, uh, yeah. no, that that didn't happen. Um, and, and I was wondering, Aaron, why the media, not the left leaning media, some conservative media outlets too. Uh, latched on to this story and they said, well, listen, why would you go and place your hand on your heart and, and, and swear to tell the truth and risk perjury, which is a serious felony, a federal offense? Why would you do that? And I'm thinking to myself, D the, because this is a Democratic panel and this is their star witness, they're not going to charge her with perjury no matter what she says. Yeah, there were a lot of really big headlines about a certain television host who sort of leaned into this logic really, really deeply and has had a lot of backlash for that. At the time this young lady was working in Washington, I believe she was a 23-year-old intern, and I've been quizzing some of the people I know that were in the administration, and they said she was always really eager to climb up the ladder, very opportunistic, was pushing people, was trying to push people like Larry Kudlow, who's so brilliant and so beloved, around. And then she was seen down in Palm Beach, sort of hanging around the Mar-a-Lago set, trying to see what scraps she could pick up post-2020. So honestly, these are some pieces of evidence that would be admissible in a real court yeah. and of course not in this court because 
it's completely biased and partisan. And for anyone on a conservative network to sort of not dig into who she is as a person and what her motives could be and sort of that this isn't a real trial, it's a disservice to the American people and it's a disservice to their viewer. And by the way, it's a service to us here at Newsmax because it's going to get more eyeballs on these screens. Totally. Yeah. And Allison, we've talked about it. It's called Washington Eyes. Yeah. Um, and this, this happens in the swamp all the time. But basically, you're talking to somebody. Picture you're at, you know, a, a, an event or something and you're talking to somebody and this person's right in front of you, but you're looking over. Yeah, you're looking. Who's, who's there, better? Who's, who's oh, better? Yeah. Who, who can I move also, on to talk to? Just very quickly, I know we have to move on, but don't you think we would have heard about this, you know, alleged uh, reaching over to grab the steering wheel well before, like, something like that? They would have brought out so fast, yeah. right after January 6th, be like, can you believe what the president did? We didn't hear about it, which is interesting to me. But anyway. That would have leaked. Uh, totally. That would Everything leak. take, leaks. Take a listen to Liz Cheney. <laughs> she was speaking at the Reagan Library uh, a day ago. Um, and Liz Cheney, again, she's going to lose her, her race mm -hmm. in Wyoming for, uh, for re-election. She's a member of Congress. She's on this committee. It, there are two there, there are fake Republicans. Adam Kinzinger is retiring. It would be amazing if Jim Jordan and Jim Banks were on this committee because I would love the cross-examination. I would love to see a real conversation about January 6th instead of what we're, what, we're, uh, what we're seeing now. But take a listen to Liz Cheney. The reality that we face today as Republicans, as we think about the choice in front of us, we have to choose because Republicans cannot both be loyal to Donald Trump and loyal to the Constitution. At this moment... Remember how the Indianapolis Colts were accused of uh, patching sound in, Chris, to their football games back in the Peyton Manning days? When I heard that round of applause, I was like, that can't be real. Like, did they it had hear what, kind of the, a delay you, to it, didn't it? Yeah, it had a delay, and it sounded too perfect. Like, they were like, yes, yes, <laughs> the best thing I've ever heard. Uh, what do you make of that? Well, what I'm waiting to hear from these uh, reports, when are we going to hear that President Trump on January 6th signed a directive to have the National Guard come to the Capitol to secure it, but the, the mayor of D.C. and Nancy Pelosi um, did not want National Guard troops in during the, uh, during the January 6th riots or siege? When are we going to hear that come out of the committee? And that's precisely why they didn't want Great Jim, point. Jeff, Jim, uh, the other congressman from Ohio the and Jones. other members of the community to be on there because they were going to be asking those tough questions. Chris, such a good Spot point. Uh, yeah. Very good. Yeah. yeah it could, could, 20,000, between 10 and 20,000. But think about it. If it was 500, that would have made a difference. Uh, Nancy Pelosi said, no, 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 we don't. No, thank you. I wonder why. Um, okay, a lot more to get to this morning, panel. We'll see you in just a little bit. Stand by. Chris Arps, Aaron Elmore, thank you.